I'm Sherry Braithwaite, and I am here to interview John Brailsford, Dr. Brailsford, that is. Brailsford. We only have to say that once, and then from now on, you just call me John. John, okay. Oh. Okay, that's good to know. John. Yes. Is, he's also the host for the um, LDS Singles Flameless Fireside Podcast. That was such a mouthful. And uh, we love that podcast. And I'm wanting people to learn more about it. Um, because it is so cool. It's, it's my idea that I have the same as you guys is that you want to hear people's stories. And I just, I love that you're doing that. And so I'm sharing with everyone. And so the reason why I'm interviewing John today, I mean, two reasons, because I, I love the topic that he specializes in for one thing. And the other is that he is doing this, this podcast. And so I am interviewing each of the hosts and because I think it's also good for them to have a chance to talk about themselves is a good way to, to to get your message out there also. So, so that being said, this is this is Dr. Brailsford, John, he wants to be called John. He yep. has a PhD in family relations and human development from Florida State University. Um, he's been a licensed marriage and family therapist for 23 years. He's now working as a therapist at Logan River Academy and I want to talk about this too with you, um, that you are creating an emotionally supportive community called One Mind Tribe for people who are looking for more than self-help, but don't necessarily need therapy. That's very similar to what I'm doing. So is it an online community or is it in person? It will become more online as we go. Um, be looking for more this summer. That's so good. I, I just love that. That's so cool. Um, somebody asked where they can find out more. Right now, probably the best place to go is Facebook and look for One Mind Tribe. Okay. And uh, there's a private page and a public page. And there's some posts from a few months ago that are just the groundwork, you know, kind of the principles that we stand by. Yeah. So if you want to go and just learn about it, read some of those uh, posts. Um, that's a good way to start. And then we'll have a website this summer and we'll go from there. So. So good. So to do some getting to know you questions too. Absolutely. Um, I, okay. I know a thing or two about myself, so. You do? Okay, good. That's yeah. good. That's a good start. So those, those questions are, I, I like those. So. <laughs> those are easy ones. Okay. Very yeah. good. Okay, so first question. Oh, I saw that you are, you, you told me that you are an aspiring author. So tell us about the book. Oh my goodness, I'm going to tell the story. Just all these amazing oh. things happening all around us that were, it was like worship, you know? Yeah. So many years later, um, I'm sitting with a famous author for, at dinner time. You know, I met this author. I was, I had taught that summer at Education Week and at BYU. And I had created these principles that I had found very helpful as a therapist to help my clients. And I gave out copies to her and all of her friends. And then later in the conversation, I tell that story of the Church of the Open Canoe. And she stops me. And she just said, John, someday I want you to write a book about <laughs> these seven principles. And the name of the book is The Church of the Open Canoe. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like thinking you are out of your ever loving mind. <laughs> I am not naming a book, the church of the open canoe. But later I thought about it. I actually texted her. And I said, I apologize. And I said, you know what? If I were in a bookstore and there were like, was like this drawing of a canoe tethered on a river, mm. you know, and it's the church of the open canoe, I would have to open that to find out what is that all about? You know? Yeah. So basically what it is, it's spirituality for people without a, a church or a religion per se, but it can also be for people with a religion. And, yeah. and my goal was these principles, if you're a Catholic, it'll make you a better Catholic. If you're a, a Latter-day Saint, it'll make you a better Latter-day Saint. If you're a Buddhist, you'll be a better Buddhist. I mean, it's just basically the, this is the bedrock of, you know, what it means to be a good human being, a good child of God, a good so you good. know spiritual being so anyway so that's the book stops okay 
So. Do you have any any anyone on Matt Damon rocks? If anyone else sees sees who we can cast him in, I, you know, and I'm really glad you're asking me these substantive questions that really get to the heart of who <laughs> I am as a person. And I'm going to ask one more question, then we'll dive in. Okay, Kevin James, James, that's it. There we go. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's see. Um, well, let me ask you this: What made you want to be a therapist first? Ooh. Um, three words, like a word or a phrase that describes a challenge or an undesirable behavior right now with your child or someone, you know, <laughs> maybe you're asking for a friend. Yeah. You could write like ADHD. You could be uncooperative co-parent. You yeah, could be right. you know, whatever you exactly. want. Thank you. That's um, good for clarification. Um, anxiety, suicide, uncooperative hey, uncooperative co yeah that's we, we knew that was gonna come up so i'm glad we got that up there. yeah oh uh, disrespect from your child i presume yeah that's what i would guess um and i would add in there um electronic addiction all the behaviors that come with electronic addiction for sure yeah okay oh yeah we and, and let me be clear too like we we put down specialty so, yeah um Listen, I would hope that in a 23 year career, every therapist would have more than one specialty. I would say of all the things I've done in my career, addiction is probably my number one specialty. Hmm. Um, oh. mind, <laughs> mindfulness based approaches is another one. Attachment based approaches to relationships is another one. Um, so that's, and then parent child stuff is another one. So there's all kinds of topics. And after a while, you kind of you don't just stick with one specialty. You just kind of add them like a tree yeah. and, and they all come together. And I think that's where the, you know, like the seven principles of the church of the open canoe or the eight skills of the one mind tribe that they, they distill upon you over time and they, and they help with everything. They help with addiction. They help with relationships. They help with you know, anxiety and depression that it really is. It touches all that. That's probably more of what you'll hear tonight okay. than the topic of parent child relationships. Well, that's but but it helps. let's just take those two, you know, or three for now. Oh, um, yeah, go ahead. So co-parenting. Um, I, I would say the first thing I'm going to say about co-parenting is don't let co-parenting distract you from parenting. Hmm. Um, focus on you parenting your child in the here and now, okay? Um, don't get lost in the past. Even if you've made mistakes, don't worry about the future. Even if you think you're going to get sabotaged or taken advantage of or whatever, just what can I do right now um, to improve the situation, improve my connection to my child, okay? Um, so I think that's important that they see you having at least a collaborative relationship. But if you can't do that, then keep it at least um, civil as much as possible. And sometimes with some people, the only way you can do that is make it electronic. So yeah. anyway, that's not, that's what, what was the next one? Um, um, do you mind if I bring up a general question that might yeah, go ahead. all of them, but we can, we still can go back to these, but I just was thinking, this answer may help all of them. I don't, I don't know. You tell me. Um, we can come back to these if it doesn't. <laughs> um, okay, so talking about um, disconnection. So because we aren't therapists, most parents are not therapists. We don't understand the behaviors. I see behavior and I know you're not supposed to um, help. You're not supposed to manage or treat or discipline the behavior it's best for you to look to what the behavior, what caused the behavior, right? The behavior is just a symptom of what they're feeling, right? Let's put it this way. When you are a therapist to mostly autism spectrum uh, kids mm. and their parents, there's pretty much not anything you don't talk about as far as disrespect, yeah. you know, because if you got kids who are wired for being overwhelmed by stimuli, yeah, you, you would not believe the tantrums um, that they can throw. And so, yeah, it can be incredible. And then the oppositional defiant kids. Oh, yeah. my goodness. You know, look out, everybody. Katie barred the door, right? Yeah. Um, I find this interesting. Okay. Um, who do you have control over? Really, when it gets down to it, only you. Yeah. And so ask yourself the question, how do I respond to this stuff? 
Okay, so let's start with something like lying. Okay, they lie to you. The first question I ask a parent who gets lied to all the time is how well do you handle the truth? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, use profanity or call names and stuff like that and think that's fine. You know, there's just no reason for it. You and I can talk. Hey, we're sitting here talking. So let's talk. Just tell me, how do you feel without putting any mustard on the hot dog? Yeah. Um, and I think those are really beautiful ways of letting them know um, that we, you don't have to yell at me to get the point across, you know? So if another question is, do I listen well? Yeah. Um, am I able to manage my own emotions as a parent? Okay. Here's another one. I interrupt contention. Mm, yeah. And right. there's something, a therapist that I, I had my daughter going to therapy years ago and, um, this therapist suggested that we have an honesty chair. <laughs> and so we were, it was just a place when she wanted to open up and tell me something that was bothering her or concerning her. She sat in the honesty chair and, and the rule is that, um, she can tell me anything that's on her mind and she cannot get in trouble for it. There cannot be right. any repercussions for it. And I can't give feedback. I can't correct. It's just listen. Like you said, you just you practice the listening and hearing and nodding and give them a hug. And then maybe later on, you can bring it up, but not while they're in the honesty chair. That gives them the opportunity to build that trust in you. Yep. And then, anyway, I love that. And I don't know how that matters. Know. They, need, they need to know that I am allowed to yeah. think stinking thoughts. I am allowed to have bad motives. I am allowed to make mistakes, you know, um, without being I can be held accountable that's different yeah you know than being punished or being shamed yeah. you know but I mean again the two things I can do wrong I don't do anything about it I'm yeah. like oh yeah that's no big deal or I make it a huge deal you know somewhere in there is hey that's not going to be good for you or make you ha that's not going to lead to a great life for you but at the same time, I don't see that as you or who you really are, you know, and you can learn from this. And so I still believe in you. Yeah. You know, can't we send both messages? That's the other thing I would do. Send both messages. The message that you can do better. But I love you the way as you, you are. Yes. Yeah. Love you as you are. That's the quote that you had on the announcement for this podcast. Oh, yes. Um, what if you do, if you notice shame coming up in you when you're watching your kid act like, act kind of foolishly in public, um, and you're trying to live your life through them or, or your ego is caught up in how they look, mm -hmm. you know, what are some solutions for that? Because that is just not healthy. Just yeah. so you know, um, you know, the best of parents have some of the most challenging kids and the worst of parents have some of the most amazing kids. It, you know, ultimately we have to hold the kids responsible for how they choose to live their life, even though parents can have a huge impact on that. Yeah. Um, but um, I, it's almost like I come out of, when I used to see my kids do dumb stuff every once in a while, I'd almost come out, I'd almost act like I'm just some member of the ward or some person in the neighborhood, you know, and, and, a, and a neighbor might comment, well, that's really interesting what your son's wearing to the you know, ward party today, you know, and it's stuff. I go, I know, isn't, isn't that quirky? Yeah. That kid, <laughs> that kid always surprises me, man. I never know what to expect. Right. Yeah. And so you just roll with it, yeah. you know, it's just like, yeah, I don't know what to expect. And, and then just say, you know, I'm just glad that he doesn't, you know, kill people and, you know, and, and rob <laughs> uh, liquor stores. Yes. I'm just making that up as I, well, and I'm glad he's here, though. That's another point. I'm glad he's here with me. Like, I, that's the thing, you know? He yeah. can be calm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so do you want me to read it? The one from Glenn Latham? Is that what you're talking about? Well, no, I, I was just answering that, that idea that we don't okay. live through. You can read it if you want. Okay. But. I don't know if this is the one you're talking about, but I like this, too. And this might be an answer to some, some people, too. That says, well-meaning parents who have tried their best should avoid the temptation of using their children's behavior as the measure of their success as parents. If children's behavior were the sole measure of good parenting, our heavenly parents would not qualify. I, I yep. like it. it has nothing to and, do and with And both have children who succeed in, yeah. in this way as well. You know, like my goal right now in my life is to learn how to um, equip my daughter with the intrinsic motivation. I want her to get the, the motivation to come from inside of her. Ultimately, 
<laughs> you can do absolutely nothing about that. Oh. But <laughs> you can have some influence in that direction. Um, so let's start with the first answer. How can I help my child? I'm going to reword this. How can I make it more likely that my child will develop an intrinsic motivation to do what is right? Manage whatever. Yeah. Yes. Whether yeah. that's manage their, yeah. make their bed or, you know, uh, not commit heinous crimes and everything in between. Yeah. Um, first question you always ask yourself as a parent, how am I doing at that? Oh, right. Yes. That's so you good. Know? And so, and another one would be, you know, like if they're throwing a tantrum, okay. And you're like saying, Hey, come on, this is no big deal. Snap out of it. But you often throw tantrums. You know, yeah, I got really upset with you, but you know what? I've been arguing with your dad and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know. Me arguing with their other parent isn't an excuse for me taking it out on them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, okay. so take responsibility. You just want us to listen, be honest, give them the safe place to share. Those are the mm -hmm. kind of things. Um, maintain your balance. Maintain balance. Um, Boundary. Manage your own triggers. I wish I could find the quote because I think it was Elder Worthland in General Conference. And he said that sin is when we seek to satisfy a legitimate need with an illegitimate action. Mm. Yeah. So if I have a sex yeah. addiction, what am I really longing for? Connection. Connection. Yep. If I have a, a drinking problem, what am I longing for? Peace. You know, if I have a meth addiction, what am I longing for? Courage and confidence. Mm. You know, like you, you point me to the addiction. I'll point you to what's missing. That's awesome. Okay. Let's and so, try. and then there are healthy ways to meet that. Yeah. You know, but just trying to, you know, the quick apology, the quick note that you matter. At some point, they're not going to believe it. They're yeah. just not going to believe it unless you back it up with your life the way you live your life. Let your life speak for you, not your mouth. That's so good. Or your hand. That's or your good. hand. Or your <laughs> thumbs on the text. We have <laughs> problems that want to be solved. We are children that need to be loved. What about